Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Hearts of Iron 4, where we're going to be playing a new game, having basically finished off the American one the other day. Pharaonix, thank you very much for the bits, preempting fewer, constantly hounding with you, hounding you to go with Trotsky. Um, so, we are going to start a new game. There is only one faction left that we have not checked out the focus tree for, and that is the other new one. And that is with Mexico, which is led by Lazaro Cardenas, non-aligned authoritarian. Mexico faced two decades of civil wars after the overthrow of the tyrant Porfirio Diaz. Centralizers fought regionalist peasants and socialists rallied against the Hacienda landlords, and battles over the role of the state versus religion came out in the annals of enlightenment to terrorize Mexico. The secularist government insists that it won these battles, but it is seated on the throne of debris. After Mexico is rebuilt, perhaps a different victor will have emerged. So, we have a weak church which gives us a factory output bonus. The constitution of 1917 requires measured aims requires measures aimed against the influence of the Catholic Church in Mexico. The Cristeros rebelled in the 1920s because of attempts to enforce these laws, but if people may now be ready to, for a secular state. We have a politicized army, which means that military leaders are really expensive, and planning speed is also slowed down. Bolin Stalin coming in with another 100 bits. Thank you very much. Time to be the best that ever was. Oh, heads up, your general is leading a revolt. Okay, <laughs> good to know. The rulers of Mexico have been drawn from the Revolutionary Army officers for almost three decades. The turbulent times we went through demanded firm leadership. The question is, has the turbulence passed, or is it becoming more severe? Should we professionalize the army or allow regional strongmen, caciques and cudillas to carve out petty fiefdoms? Generals like Saturnio Cadillo in San Luis Potosi are raising private militias to protect their power. The many rebellions launched by dissatisfied officers in the past are likely to continue unless we act. And we've got the oil's concessions. In order to exploit oil in Mexico, foreign companies have signed concession contracts ensuring that they can freely extract oil in a defined territory for a prolonged period of time in exchange for payments. However, the sum paid by the companies were far below the value of the oil extracted and enabled them to get a profit margin much higher than countries such as the US, while putting the oil reserves of Mexico directly under foreign control. Got the Aztec Eagles, Hispanic Alliance, and then smash the bureaucrats. All right, let's do this. I think we're going to. No, I'm not going to buff anyone. Am I going to buff people? We're going to buff people. Yes, even the US. Nope, not that much for France. Buff, buff, buff. And foreign policy, all of those, we're going to leave the same. We're going to leave those the same. We're going to leave those the same. AI behavior. Now, as I'm coming into this with no real idea, I think I'm just going to leave this as default. That leaves a chance that things will go differently, but it's not going to be so outright bonkers as the America game. I will not, however, be turning on historical AI focuses. And we're not going to fragment anyone. Make New Zealand aggressive. Nah, this is fine. So we're just going to leave that as is. Playing on veteran. Let's hope the UI loads. I have my doubts. Are you going to work? I don't know why this bug keeps on happening to me. Because I haven't seen it reported anywhere else. It is definitely something to do with alt-tabbing out. Oh, that's a question, actually. For those of you who are... No, it didn't. Uh, for those of you who are watching the previous stream, did we have transcoding, then? And do we have transcoding now? No, we did not have transcoding. Okay. And do we now? The other thing I should mention is we are now playing with player-led peace conferences because I hate how vanilla peace does. So the the incursion of mods to these games has begun. 
But player-led peace conferences I kind of consider a must-have nowadays. So we will need to remember to keep a partial eye on how the other wars are going in case they end, so that I can give the right land to the right people. I think I'm usually pretty good about being pretty fair and balanced about who gets what. So while that loads up, let's get the tea supplies sorted. And then I'll go and update my... Well, no, we're going to load the game, and then I'm going to update my um, transcoding notification to myself. Alright, single player, new game, select scenario, Mexico, no, that's Germany, Mexico. And we didn't tweak anything, so we can literally just press start. Fair and balanced, I get everything in. If you don't like it, fight me! Right, let me just update my transcoding stuff. I'm trying to keep a log of when I have transcoding and for which streams. So we did not previously and we do now. And today is Tuesday. And today is the 12th of March, 2018. 5 p.m., 10 p.m. Cool. I'll fill in the rest later. Right, so, here we go, Mexico. Let's take a look at the focus tree, shall we? So we have the National Bank. The National Bank leads to many military modifications and also building the stuff. So, hang on, let's just take a look at the focuses. So we have the Cordillo Tensions Moderate, which reduces stability. We have the Politicized Army, which we saw earlier, the Concessions, the Weak Church, and the Callistas, which do reduce my construction speed, which I don't like. National Bank will allow us to get the Banco de Mexico, which reduces the economy laws cost. Military budget review will allow us to get Comancho, who increases the speed of military construction, Gulf Coast Naval Yards, which gives us the Golfo Design Company, which gives more armor for carriers and capital ships. So that's, yeah, the Atlantic Fleet Designer. We have this one, which is the Pacific Fleet Designer. It is not an either-or. We can get either of these. And then that leads to the Brown Water Navy, which is escort efficiency up, and then either raiding or blue water. Heroic Military College, Superior Firepower Doctrine, Superior Firepower Expert. So it does look like we're going to be going superior firepower, which is fine. Better fighters, I like that. Better armor, though it's a very slight bonus. Still at peace, expanding our armed forces would be very unpopular. Stability goes down. But I guess if we're at war and we do this, then it's going to be fine. That's interesting. That gives us... Or that, that's a focus which is conditional on being on a, at war or not. I can see mods having fun with that. And then artillery. Cool. Uh, meanwhile, down this side, we need to choose between the agricultural credit bank and then liberalize the banking sector. If we liberalize, we can get a consumer goods factory reduction. And we also get some more stability, which reduces tensions. Or we get the construction speed and civilian factory construction speed bonus. Arr. I do like that advisor. Ambitious union boss, consumer goods factories, daily communism support. So if you wanted to go communism, we'd have to go this way. And that's an extra research slot, so is that. Factory output. 
even lower Cadillo tension. So this is like the low tension route. National Spirit, Cordillo Private Armies, Recruitable Population, War Support goes up. And then here we can source, support him, so Cordillo will be placated. We get Cordillo as a Field Marshal. And we lose the Cordillo tensions completely. However, if we go this way, then we go Communism, Political Power, Stability. The Church becomes Atheist. And we get the Ajido worker militias, which is recruitable population. So either route gets us more recruitable population, although the communist route gets us more. And then this one basically switches us, uh, switches us to communist. Now, there are a bunch of focuses which we're not allowed to have done if we do go this way. Institutional revolution, Catholic policies, crusade against atheism, revanchism and communist revolution. Sorry, revanchist revolution, communist revolution. Really, so you're not allowed to do this if you've had the communist revolution. And this guy builds infrastructure and civilian factories even faster. Oh, that's Cardenas. He's in, um... Wait, we Cardenas at the moment? We do have... Oh, it's the same dude. Oh, I see. He takes over the communists and then Plutarco Icalis, that's a great name, uh, becomes the leader of the non-aligned. And then once we've done the science stuff, then we can choose what to do about oil fields. Oh, I did buff everyone. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It's Cardillo who's the best general. Okay, cool. Uh, do I want to look at these now? I think I probably do. So, oil field expansion, Royal Dutch Shell. United States removes rights of the resources in Coahuila. Adds more production. And we get access to Royal Dutch Shell. Industrial research, synthetic resource. Finding concern, trade laws cost minus 25. So trade laws and also economic laws can be reduced. That's interesting. Then we can join the community of nations. Yeah, we join the allies. And we can try to buy Honduras or Belize. Gains capital reserves, license purchase cost minus 50%, license production speed plus 25%. Interesting. So we can then buy licenses from the other powers and then start producing those quicker. <coughs> or we can nationalise, which will piss off the US and the UK. It will give us a bunch more oil. And we get Permex as an available, who has got infrastructure construction speed, so I already kind of like that one more than Royal Dutch Shell. We can compensate them. We can oppose them, or we can give them to Germany. So if we compensate them, we can join the Americans. Oh, and here's the Aztec Eagles. Impose Yankee... Sorry, oppose Yankee imperialism, war support. That makes us more communist. And we can join the Comintern. Or the German side... Which gives us Gross Tractors license. But we give Germany resources and fascism becomes more popular. So we can join either of the three. Okay, Agua Pieta. Stability plus five. Then we can either exile Cales or Jefe Maximo. F.A. Maximo, Plutarco Icalis becomes a field marshal. Replace Callistas with Callis. Political power gain plus 30 and construction speed plus 10. Ooh. Daily support for unaligned goes up. If we exile Callis, then we can purge the bureaucracy. Escobar becomes a general. He's a cavalry genius, so we'd have really good motorized and mechanized. 
and then we can try to arrest Cadillo, but I'm pretty sure that that leads to a civil war. Removes the national spirit completely, though. So that's a very quick step to remove the spirit, while this is going to be slower. <coughs> All right, control the army so we can repeal the callous war law, which makes the church more assertive, but it loses us factory output. Gain stability, though. Now, stability is terrible. Uh, base war support. Become more atheist. Or the anti-disestablishmentarianism. I love the fact that they actually got that into the game. Allows us to actually empower the church further. Oh, and this is how you get the Knights of Columbus and the Legion of Christ. Or if we repel, repeal, we get political power, triumph over them, we get a new general, Garza, and we get the Prince of Terror. State education is another research slot, so the only way we can get that is going the left... Well, actually, we can do both. Oh no, this is an either-or. So state education makes us atheist and makes us even more productive. Leads to electronics, leads to more civilian factories, leads to more military factories... Leads to the engineering school. Oh, this only requires one of the, the other. So we can always get these two. Electronics concern. Aircraft manufacturer cost minus 25. Oh, that reduces the, ma the, uh, the design company costs. Mexico can do some interesting things with that. <coughs> Industrial promotion. More military. More military. Or we can go for the Knights of Columbus, which will give us an assertive church. It will mean that we have more democracy, even more infrastructure construction and factory construction. Then leads down to Catholic politics, which is more democracy, a lot more stability. And Primate of Mexico becomes the new democratic leader. And then social Catholicism, which is even more construction speed. Okay, I'm liking the sound of this just because I love building stuff fast. So if you want to become an industrial powerhouse, you kind of need to go democratic. Then going either way of this, you do get a research slot. So state education doesn't give you very much. Although I guess state education is required if you go communist church politics oh, we saw that one already crusade, crusade against atheism so fascism goes up war support goes up no more elections mobilization speed more fascist support then once you've finished either of those then you can get the synchronous communes civilian factories and then you can choose to reform the guard and Geyser becomes a general more recruitable population. Oh, you get a new general or more recruitable population. And then this is where the diplomatic stuff goes on. Or you can go down this side. Depoliticized army, which means tensions go down. Tensions go down even further. Oh, and you get army planning skill and logistics for every single general. And the starting logistics and planning of all new generals also goes up. Interesting. <clears throat> Spanish Civil War refugees. Ooh. More fascist, more communist. You can support the loyalists, so communism goes up. Support stability, you become atheist. Or fascist goes up. And then these are just the, well, Hispanic Alliance... Argentina, Bolivia, Chile. Oh! So you basically try to take over... Well, you create a faction in South America. Oh, now that's interesting. Propaganda pact, more stability and war support, and then invite Brazil. So yeah, you can basically create an entire faction in South America, which is kind of a cool idea. Real politics, stability, war support, political power. Oh, and you can also do it with the Bolivarian Alliance. So this one, you can create your own faction and go your own way. The Bolivarian Alliance also allows you to do solidarity. 
Except this is going strong church, this is going weak church. And you have to be communist or non-aligned for that one. You have to be fascist or non-aligned for that one. And anyone can do that one. Smash the bureaucrats. Vanguard of the 4th International. Non-core non -core manpower plus 5%. When you conquer other stuff, that's going to be a lot of manpower. And you get a puppet war goal against the Soviet Union. One world government. Well, that's certainly ambitious. Cardenas proclaims the union of all communist movements. Liberate the Antilles. Going after a France, the US, the Netherlands and the UK. Okay. I'm, get, I'm getting a few ideas of potential things that we can do here. And then we've also got banned political militias and then the legacy of the Revolution. So if we go with the politicized militias, then tensions go down. You can actually go either way here. Oh, this requires... Oh, this just, yeah, just requires those two. So if you want a quick burst of civilian factories, then you go this way. And the Solditas, set rule, women in your country allowed to become military pilots. Uh, I guess you get more aces? Versus having better generals? Legacy of the Revolution. Oh, it's neither or. So you can't get professional army unless you've got the political militias. However, with the Legacy of the Revolution, you can do this. Gold shirts, syncretic revanchist, daily fascism support, or the red shirts, division attack and defense on core territory, revanchist revolution. International struggle. That one doesn't really do much, this one. Lend lease, tension limits, send volunteers. Oh, so you can just get more involved in foreign affairs. And then this one switches you to communist, justify war goal time, mobilization speed. And yeah, that's all of them. Hey, Scapper. Like I said, Mordred, the Mexican Air Force shall rule the skies. Cardenas is remembered in Mexico as the greatest constructive radical of the revolution. Okay. <laughs> El Cadavo and which tree? Um... That's a good question. I don't know, probably fascist? He certainly doesn't come across like a communist. That would certainly be Colombo. So yeah, I think he would be the Legion of Christ. Crusade against atheism. But none of them are like particularly capitalist. In fact, it just doesn't exist here. <laughs> and that's definitely what Cadaver would be. Well, he's, just, he's an explorer, he's an adventurer. I mean, Puppet of the Soviet Union makes sense when you can see the first option for the person needed to be in charge. Yeah, Trotsky, I know. Colombo is the Knights of Colombo. You're not wrong. Is the 1.6.1 beta worth signing into? That's a good question, and I'm not currently playing with it. So I should probably go and grab that. Well, this is going to allow me to buff everyone as well. So there we go. Play. No, don't play. Bad. Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Beaters. I only disabled it last time because it kind of screwed up my America game. So yes, it is worth getting because it does fix a bunch of things. And it's also just a general balance pass, which is kind of needed. 
If you don't arrest or help Cadillo early on, there will be a civil war, okay? Not too many spoilers, though, please. Go away. Took a while to appear. Betas. 1.6.1. Boop. Update queued. Is it still 12 megabytes? Nope, this one's 6.7 megabytes, so we've gone for the small update again. Hey, monster. You are indeed watching live. <clears throat> that is true. I was going to set up a straw poll, so while that is updating, we can do that. So what are the options? It's... I mean, as communist Trotsky, communist not Trotsky, um, fascist and democratic uber industrial mad power house. Oh yeah, religious. Well, yeah, how religious we go, I think, is going to be more of a question under the Democrats. The others, it's fairly one or the other. So I'm not going to make that part of the poll question. So we got communist Trotsky, communist not Trotsky, fascist, democratic uber industrial mad powerhouse. I think these are basically the options, so have at it! And also, you know, talk and try to persuade each other of stuff. Right, let's load the game up again. Democracy is boring, restore the Aztec Empire and expand it. I disagree that democracy in this is boring. I know I'm in a, definitely in a minority, but I actually quite like playing the democratic nations because it tends to be a hell of a lot harder. At least until the end game. Early game it is freaking difficult. I remember, like, the democrats get a ridiculous amount of industry. I, I think they probably can get 30 or 40% factory construction speed. Mexico, select custom game rules. Buff all of them. I'm going to save this preset as just default. Save. So I don't need to do that every single time. Good start. <laughs> Voted for Borgio the Besieger. All right, let's see how things are standing. Um, yep, that's actually pretty much what I was expecting. So make sure you get the votes in because as freaking always, guys, it's tied. 45-45, so make sure you get those votes in. Come on, people. That one fascist vote. Mm -hmm. Democratic Uber Industrial Mad Powerhouse is winning. Still close enough, though. I'll give this another minute. So you have until 35 minutes past. Well, it's actually 35 seconds. 30 seconds. Bearing in mind that there is a little bit of a delay. So I'll probably end this five seconds before you think I would. All right, the Democrats are pulling even further ahead. Oh, the fascists are getting some votes. Ha! <laughs> Two fascist votes are from Hitler and Mussolini back from the grave. And that's true. Nobody wants the not Trotsky. Now, I don't think that I influenced this at all by just labelling it communist Trotsky and uber 
industrial mad powerhouse for the Democrats. Absolutely none. Can't see a link to the vote? Well, have a look at the vote. There you go. 